Hello, I'm Ken Burrell from Pragmatic PMO. This is one of a series of videos expanding on the Success Stories Shared initiative that was started in South Africa by Linky van der Merwe of Virtual Project Consulting and Louise Worsley of Pi Cubed, and which has their, their enthusiastic support. Aldous Huxley said that men do not learn very much from the lessons of history is the most important of all the lessons of history. Project management research has shown that project managers prefer to learn by face-to-face -face interaction rather than by searching through lessons learned databases. I think that project managers can learn a lot from each other's success stories and even more from sharing their scars. So as part of my campaign for real project managers, on your behalf I'm talking to some real project managers that I've had the pleasure of working alongside so that you can benefit from their experience. Today I'm delighted to have with me Paul Lomax who's going to share some of his experiences with us. Hi Paul, I'd like you to start if you can by introducing yourself and giving us a flavour of your background and how you got into project management. My name is Paul Lomax, currently working on a project at ASOS. Um, before that I did a couple of different contracts whilst I've been self-employed with my limited company. I did a job at The Guardian um, and also another at Lloyd's. Before that I was with some financial institutions, I was bar with Barclays for a number of years. Um, and uh, also Royal Bank of Scotland for a while. I um, also worked at Ernst & Young. My first ever job was working um, for the accommodation section at Transport for London and that's kind of how I got into project management was very, um, I'm going to say serendipitous because of what I do now and I like it, but at the time it just felt like they were finding me another job to do. So that, that first job was um, looking after one of hundreds of properties that Transport for London own all over London um, and as was the want of people at the time in the early 2000s um, it was kind of given to the little people to do the, the most amount of work so it was, it was a great environment <laughs> to cut my teeth on and actually taught me a lot about the industry at a very early stage of my, of my, uh, my career. So what sort of projects do you typically work with now? What kind of size? What kind of stuff? A real smorgasbord. Um, I've, I've done in the last you know, two or three jobs that I've done, relocation projects, moving businesses uh, between locations. That was the, the primary goal of the job that I did at Lloyd's. Um, that was just over, uh, just over 2,000 people, so a fairly sizable job. Um, I then went to do a kind of ways of working project, new adaptive environments kind of a job at The Guardian, um, which was very much looking at the way they work and trying to adapt their workspace, reduce down on the amount of space that they use, but it was, it was a totally different kettle of fish. Okay, so thinking back over your career, can you give us an example of a scar? So something that went wrong on a project that you were managing and how you recovered from it? Yes, I think the story that um, I, I want to tell with regards to this, a scar that I, I definitely definitely wore, uh, was uh, I was doing a job, a major relocation job at the Paris offices for Barclays Wealth um, and it was uh, over a few, a few weeks we had to move entirely out of a building that they had on, on um, Rue, de, Rue de la Madeleine and move across town to where the Arc de Triomphe was. I came in kind of last minute so I didn't have a lot of time to prep for the relocation as I would have liked to have done. What kind of transpired on that first evening, everybody left the office at five o'clock as they were supposed to. The idea then was to move out all the crates, all the IT and then start ripping out the, the, the furniture, the fittings, the offices, everything that we had in the office. One of the things that they had in the old office was a kitchen facility. Um, they didn't do very much, but just a little bit of, of catering for guests that came in. But they had three or four big industrial size uh, fridges. Mm -hmm. My instructions to the guys was just rip them out, everything is getting skipped. What I hadn't appreciated, and obviously no one had appreciated, was that the, the, uh, the fridges were actually plumbed in. So when they came to rip them out, pipes just started gushing water out onto the floor. I was elsewhere in the building on another floor. I had uh, a couple of relocation guys just run up to me um, in their very broken English. My, my French is, is, is certainly not good enough to, to be working full time out in France. Tell me what happened. So we ran down. What essentially happened was over the course of about an hour, we, we finally managed to find an out of hours plumber, which actually in France is a much harder enterprise than it might be in London, in, in, in the UK. We've managed to find someone come out, um, uh, stop at the leak. We then basically spent the rest of the evening and all the way through the night of Saturday morning as well, clearing up the mess, 
some of the water had seeped down into the offices below, which was unfortunately a quite a, a famous French fashion house, and it was all their their IT systems that were beneath. So it was it was a bit of a nightmare. Um, it it's, uh, it was a pretty horrific twelve hours in in my in my project career that um, I wouldn't want to live again. So were you able to complete the move on time? And we, we did. I mean, so we, we had contingency baked into the weekend, but obviously meant we used all of that. We yeah. actually finished the relocation at about five or six o'clock in the morning on, on, sun, on Monday morning, went and got some breakfast and came back into the office to welcome people back into the office. I, I don't think I slept for more than maybe four hours that weekend. It was... It was it was quite a it was quite an ordeal. Wow. Yeah. That, that does sound that does sound like a scar. What action would you recommend to other people that they take? So I think you know in a, in a very narrow sense, if you're moving industrial fridges, check if they're plumbed in. I think that's certainly the first <laughs> first yeah. lesson that I learned from that. I think more fundamentally, though, um, and something that I've taken through to you know for for other jobs that I've done throughout my career, is uh, you're just taking the time to check and assess and review things that you're being asked to do you know inevitably in the line of work that we do you have to rely a fair bit on you know uh, professional opinions and other people's voices but if there is something that you can just get off your chair and go and check go and talk to somebody that's what you should do in the first instance you know it, that for this particular job in Paris it would have only taken me 10 minutes to walk around that kitchen and just check how things were plumbed in where the wires went to what was movable I, I didn't do that you know I relied on the fact that you know someone had told me to rip everything out that's essentially what I was going to do so I, I think that's definitely something that I've carried through for, for the rest of my career just you know take that time out take that five minutes take that ten minutes just go and check something out go and speak to someone and ask about something you know don't rely on being given secondhand or third-hand information about how things are going to work mm. okay so don't take things at face value probe a bit yeah, exactly right. You know, you, you're going to be responsible for delivering on something. If there is something that is very easily checkable, go and take the time to go and talk to, to somebody who might know the answer very briefly. Don't keep it as an unknown that you'll later come to. You know, just take that time to go and do it and get it sorted out whilst you're there. Okay, thanks for that. Um, so do you have an example of a success story? So something that you regularly do when you're managing projects that contributes to success? Sure. I, I, I don't think this is going to be anything new, but it's certainly something that I have to keep reminding myself to do. Um, and that's just really about communication. I think communication is such a massive part of, of what we do as, as a project management toolkit. Um, and I think, you know, when I first started out doing this job, I was a little green and it's sometimes hard to go and speak to particular people. If they're a different um, grade above you, you might feel that you're taking up their time or whatever. It was something I was reluctant to do. I think I often felt in meetings that I was maybe a bit reticent about, about delivering on news and asking questions or whatever. And I think it's something that is key to good, successful project management is just communicating to everybody involved in a project, making sure everybody's on, on board with what you're doing. Don't hold back on delivering news that or updates or progress reports or whatever it might be because you, you fear of you know, how that might be taken. Uh, and that's something that I, I try and apply all the time and remind myself in all meetings, don't skip over things that you would rather not discuss. Get them out in the open, get everyone's opinion. Everybody feels a lot more um, together and, and willing to promote and progress a project if they're in the know about what's, what's happening and where we are with things. So I, I think that's definitely, um, something that I want to keep developing, remind myself, work into everything I do. It's such a massive part of project management. It's just really good communication. Paul, thanks for your insights. So today we've heard from Paul about how he recovered from something that went wrong, and he's given us some tips on things to do to help things go well. Anton Chekhov said, knowledge is of no value unless you put it into practice. I believe the value of learning comes not from documenting the past, but from changing what we do in the future. So my challenge to you is what can you learn from this? What will you do differently in your projects as a result of Paul's experience? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and found it stimulating, please leave a comment or a like or both or share it with others on social media. If you think these videos are useful and interesting, let me know and I'll make more of them. If you want to appear in one, let me know. For other videos on project management topics, take a look at my video channel. 
For articles on project management and PMO topics, visit my website, pragmaticpmo.com, or follow me on Twitter at pragmaticpmo. To connect with me more personally, search LinkedIn for Ken Burrell Pragmatic PMO. In the meantime, until the next time, thanks for watching.